Hey everybody, welcome to another random game on shrinking. Today I have another game from the Avalon Hill Game Company, Avalon Hill Microcomputer Games. And this time the game is Telengard, which was an early RPG, an early computer RPG, originally released in 1982. This version is a slightly later release. Um, you see it says Commodore 64 and Atari. This one that it says on copyright 1984, so it's a couple of years later. But uh, this was basically a, a sort of a roguelike where you go th into a dungeon in real time, there's random encounters, random treasure, you get to fight monsters, stuff like that. Uh, the map actually was fixed, it was not a random map, but everything that happened once you got into the dungeon was um, randomly generated. And this game was super popular back in the day. I, I must have been <laughs> pirated by a lot of uh, people. It was very well known. Um, I think for anybody who was, who was around in that era probably heard of it. I don't know if many people actually had the, the real box edition. <laughs> I'm not really sure about that. Look how beautiful this is. I mean, I, the, I really love this picture on the cover with the dragon carrying away this guy. Uh, that's sort of what happens in the game, actually. You wander into the dungeon in the wrong place and... Uh, you get uh, manhandled by, by a dragon. There's nothing you can do about So it's a pretty apt depiction of the game. All the graphics of the game were not quite as good as the cover, as you might imagine. Uh, and here's the back, where it sort of shows you again that the game comes on a cassette tape. And you can see um, from looking at the picture, this is the Commodore picture. Um, what kind, well, The graphics are not bad, actually, for 1984, but uh, they're, they're somewhat basic compared to today. And you see, it acknowledges that Telengard is a solitaire game between you and your microcomputer. I guess every one-player game is sort of a solitaire game. But what it says there is, however, it may also be played as a competition between two or more players. Like a deck of cards, there's virtually no limit to the number of ways the game may be played. You can compete to see who can advance his character up to level 3 the fastest. You can roll until you get a character with a high special ability for spellcasting or charm. Or you can just go, go to see who can snarf up the most gold at a given time. I think what they're trying to say in a, sort of a nice way is that there's no real way to win this game. There's no real story. It's just a matter of you go in, you fight monsters, you get treasure, you get magical swords, you level up, you fight more monsters, etc., and you get to a deeper level of the dungeon, and basically that's it. That's the game. It's, uh, it's not very deep. <laughs> but again, for 1982, uh, this was pretty impressive, and uh, even 1984, it was still somewhat impressive at that time. Although, you know, it doesn't stand up to, to necessarily every single other role-playing game in 1984, of course. So, this, this package is definitely an original shrink wrap. Uh, Jim Leonard looked at the other video for Lords of Karma and was saying it wasn't, and I'm not sure about that, he might be right. It definitely didn't look like original shrink wrap in many respects. But this one here, you can tell for sure that it is. The shrink wrap is very sort of flexible, supple. It has sort of the, the, the standard... Uh, shrink wrap holes that you'll find in the original shrink. I don't know if you can see that. Try to zoom in there. Um, there is one of those holes. It's hard to see, actually. There's also another one here on the other side, um, right over there. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to bring it closer to the camera. Yeah, you can see there that the, 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 the shrink wrap has a little hole in it. At least it's this color. That's a little hole in the shrink wrap. Again, those are somewhat telltale signs of original shrink. This is definitely original shrink. I'm going to open it up and see what's inside, and uh, here we go. Oops. Okay, got this thing opened up. Let's open the box. Two-piece box again. What do we have here? Let's see, we have a manual. And this manual is copyright 1982. So I guess it's probably the original manual, because I've seen other versions of this game where it said second edition or something like that. Um, so I'm guessing this is probably an original manual, though... Um, yeah, it looks, like, it looks like it is. I don't see any loading instructions for any particular platform. Actually, no, that's not true. Here we have cassette loading instructions, Commodore 64, so it might not be original manual, actually. There's probably too many options here. 
There's Atari, Toyota Sadie, Commodore 64, Pet, Apple. So this particular version only came with a tape for Atari 8-bit and Commodore 64, but obviously there are other versions that, as we said before in the other video, the boxes might have been slightly different, uh, but other versions had different boxes. It even says in the box here, actually, um, this game is also available for other microcomputer systems. So the next thing we have in this box is this really nice poster, which basically is the artwork. I don't know if you can even see that. I have to zoom the camera out here a little bit. But basically it's a, a pretty gigantic poster <laughs> with the box artwork. Pretty cool. Uh, very suitable for framing or, or hanging on your wall if, if that's what you like to do. Or also suitable for obviously collecting and storing with your game. So let me fold that back up. Then we have a little cardboard tray. If you remember the other game, Lords of Karma, it had a real nice molded plastic tray. This one is just cardboard. Here's the tape. Again, looking at it, you can see it says on it it's for Atari home computers. And then if you turn over, you get Commodore 64. A little bit blurry there. Nothing on the back, but uh, Commodore 64 if you turn it over. There we go. And here now we actually see it says on the inside of the tray, please lift tray. It didn't say on the other one, but here they, they're smart enough to print that on there to let you know there is stuff underneath here. As we can see through the hole, there's definitely something underneath. And what do we have here? It is a catalog. This time it's effective from March 1984. With all sorts of games that were available at that time. Tabletop games, microcomputer games. Looks like the microcomputer game section starts on page 14, although they have some looks like Atari 2600 games on this page, which is sort of interesting. And here's the microcomputer game section, and there sure are a lot of them that you could order. Adventure, arcade, science fiction, sports illustrated, lots of stuff there. Here there's actually a special insert, specifically it looks like for the Atari 2600 games. They're calling themselves the Avalon Hill Video Game Company. I actually did not know that they made these, that's interesting. There is a registration card. Two, two of them actually, one to, to register your own product. And the other one is do a friend a favor and give Avalon Hill their name so that they can also get on the mailing list and learn about all their wonderful games. Yet another catalog here specifically for the games for the home computer. And this is pretty cool, probably worth uh, even just going through just by itself. But you can see some of the really cool games they made just on the cover here. And open it up, there's some strategy war games. A lot of them, that was their, their biggest line actually, that's most of their tabletop games were. Uh, educational, family, and general situations. These are the games that nobody played. <laughs> Sports games. Sci-fi. Fantasy and adventure. There's Telengard. There's Lords of Karma. Arcade. And that's basically it. So. That's it, and we can see there definitely was stuff underneath the tray. Um, and I think that, you know, somebody was saying, hey, there shouldn't have been anything underneath that molded piece of the other Lords of Karma box. I think it demonstrated pretty well here that Avalon Hill definitely used to put stuff underneath their, their inserts where the tapes were, so it's not a stretch to imagine that that might have been the same way for Lords of Karma as well. Anyway, I hope that was interesting, and I uh, encourage you guys to check this game out, and especially the super cool poster. And uh, have a good day, everybody. Till next time, please support physical copies of games.